This lesson was prepared by John Bentz and Sam Drurb as part of the National Science Foundation supported Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom, or books. This lesson covers the topic of water pollution, the types of contaminants, and testing protocols. This lesson will be presented in conjunction with hands on lab activities provided with the lesson and the virtual boat game available at the App Store. Water pollution is any change in water quality that is harmful to the organisms that live in a particular body of water or to the humans that may use it as a source of recreation or for direct consumption. Cuyahoga River is one of the most widely known and extreme examples of water pollution resulting from human activity. The Cuyahoga was one of the most polluted water bodies in the world. Flammable chemicals and garbage would be put directly into the river from industrial activities in the area. These chemicals would then float on the surface of the water and ignite. This river has caught fire at least 14 times, with the last event occurring in 1969. This burning river helped establish the Environmental Protection Agency and helped pass the Clean Water Act. Although dramatic improvements have been made to the quality of the Cuyahoga River, it is still considered polluted due to the large amount of urban runoff, non-point source problems, combined sewer overflows, and stagnation due to the water impoundment by dams. The Environmental Protection Agency classified portions of the Cuyahoga River watershed as one of the 43 Great Lakes areas of concern. There have been numerous local, state, and federal regulations that have increased the quality of surface waters in the United States. The Clean Water Act was enacted in 1972 and has since been amended. This act of Congress provides standards for allowed pollutants and a permitting process that reduces the impacts of industry on surface waters. This act also provides funds to cover monitoring and enforcement costs. The National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System is another such program that provides guidelines which any business releasing potential pollutants into a body of water must follow. The permits that are issued are unique to each business. There are two categories of pollution, point and non-point source. Point source pollution can be traced to a single source such as industrial power plants, drainage pipes, and sewer lines. Non-point source pollution cannot be traced to a single source and can be a widespread throughout the region. Examples of non-point source pollution are agricultural and stormwater runoffs. There are many different types and sources of contaminants. Pathogens generally come from contaminated waterways through human or animal waste. Nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus are often associated with agricultural runoff but can also come from lawn runoff or sewage treatment facilities. Organic pollution, such as oil and gasoline, are typically found in urban runoff from roads and parking lots. Inorganic pollutants, such as salt, can also come from urban runoff. Road salt after a snowmelt is a great example of inorganic pollutants. It is one of the most significant pollutions worldwide. The most common sources of sediment pollution in streams and lakes are from agricultural or building projects. Heavy metal and thermal pollution are typically associated with the burning of fossil fuels. The most commonly tested water quality parameters are water temperature, pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, dissolved oxygen, turbidity, or water clarity, total dissolved solids, and total suspended solids. Temperature is a measure of how cool or warm the water is. Typical range of surface water temperatures during the summer sampling season is 18 to 24 degrees Celsius. The most likely source of thermal pollution is through power plant discharge. Rapid fluctuations in temperature can be harmful to most aquatic organisms and make fish susceptible to disease. pH is a measure of acidity or alkalinity using the concentration of hydrogen ions. Preferred range of pH for a healthy aquatic system is 6.5 to 8, but some organisms can survive in a pH as low as 4.5 and as high as 10. The two most common sources of increased acidity in the eastern United States are acid mine drainage and acid rain. Nitrates is a fertilizer used by plants for growth. Typically, nitrates are below 1 mg per liter, but can reach levels as high as 30 mg per liter. Excess nitrates are potentially harmful to humans and may lead to fish kills. Usually, nitrate levels peak in early spring due to snowmelt and runoff, and can come from wastewater treatment facilities, leaky septic systems, or runoff from agricultural practices or industry. This figure shows the nitrogen cycle. Nitrates can be fixed from atmospheric nitrogen and then used by plants and ultimately animals. Excess nitrates can run off the land and fertilize the waterways. Phosphates are also a fertilizer used by plants. Phosphate levels are typically below 0.01 mg per liter, and excess phosphates stimulate algal growth and can result in fish kills. 
The most common source of phosphorus pollution are wastewater treatment facilities, decaying organic material, and agricultural runoff. Dissolved oxygen is required by aquatic organisms, and the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water has an important impact on the types of fish and invertebrates that can live there. Typical dissolved oxygen levels in water is 2 to 14 milligrams per liter and fluctuates over the course of the day due to photosynthesis occurring in the stream. Reductions in dissolved oxygen occurs due to increase in temperature, increase in organic matter decomposition caused by algal blooms, or a reduction of habitat complexity. This diagram shows how an import of pollution can decrease dissolved oxygen downstream. Turbidity is a measure of how transparent the water is measured as a depth in centimeters or meters. The clearer the stream or lake is, typically the more healthy it is. Turbidity increases due to suspended solids such as soil that are washed into the water body. Deforestation, construction projects, and agricultural can cause increases in turbidity. Another source of increased turbidity or decreased transparency is algal growth. Algal biomass caused by excessive nutrients negatively impact water transparency. Specific conductance is a measure of the amount of salts dissolved in water, measured as microsiemens per centimeter, and ranges from 40 to 800 in southeast Ohio. Specific conductance is a measure of the amount of salts that are dissolved in water. It is measured as microsiemens per centimeter and ranges from 40 to 800 in southeast Ohio. Sources of increased specific conductance are agricultural runoff, road salts, and mining. Dun blah, blah, blah. Total dissolved solids is a measure of the number of ions, minerals, and etc. that is often dissolved in water. Specific conductance and total dissolved solids are correlated and specific conductance is part of the total dissolved solids. Total suspended solids is a measure of how much sediment, algae, or fine particulates that are suspended within a water sample and is very similar to turbidity, but measured as milligrams per liter instead of centimeters or meters. This can give an indication of problem areas of erosion. We will continue this lesson by calculating a water quality index WQI score for a sample of water provided by your teacher. In this lab, we will measure six water quality parameters. Once you have experience using the water quality index, play the fish kill game as part of the virtual boat available in the App Store. This game will allow you to see how different sources of pollution impact the water quality index parameters along the Ohio River.